Lesson two, understanding lake structure. In this lesson, when we talk about lake structure, we're talking about the characteristics of a lake that make it a good place to fish. Structure provides the necessary elements for aquatic food to grow and allow trout to remain healthy and find food. Now, not all lakes contain all aquatic insects, only those that have established a life cycle through the years. Now, you can fish, fly fish, any lake, but not all lakes are suitable for fly fishing. To understand lake structure, we have to look at the size of the lake, the characteristics of the lake. Do we have a good lake structure or do we have a poor lake structure? Is there aquatic food cycles that exist in the lake? Not all lakes have the same aquatic food. For lake sizes, we need to break them down into two categories. For fly fishing purposes, lakes come in two sizes, small or large. Now, small lakes are between 15 and 60 acres. They usually have good cover around the lake that reduces the wind. They are good elements in the lake to support aquatic food and fish. It's small enough so that you can navigate around it many times during the day. Large lakes are over 60 acres. If their depth is over 25 feet, you may have limited access to aquatic food. There can be problems when you try to fish a lake of this size. Size makes it difficult to cover the entire lake. Food is spread out everywhere, and the trout are too. The lake is so deep that fish can just avoid you. The wind can blow harder because of the large water surface. This makes it difficult to present flies properly. They are also home to power boats that can cause unmanageable wakes. This too makes it difficult to present flies properly. However, some large lakes have coves or inlets that meet the criteria of small lakes. And there may be several of them so that you can fish them quite easily. There are some large lakes that have shoreline areas that meet the criteria of small lakes. You would be fishing around the lake on the edges, and there may be some limit to the type or numbers of insects that are present, but it still can be a good place to fish. For good lake structure, a lake should be 3 to 25 feet deep. It should have a gradual shoreline slope. The weed structures are the types that support aquatic insects. They should have a depth that supports a good temperature range and it can have channels or deep pools that provide protection and good cover for trout. Now for poor lake structure, the lake can either be too deep or too shallow to fish. If it has a fast sloping shoreline with sparse or no good reed structure, there could, that could mean that there are no insects present, no cover or channels that fish can use for protection. They may be so shallow that oxygen will be depleted on warm months, killing fish and insects. Aquatic food structure we are looking for is good flow of water from rivers and streams or springs that produce oxygen for the food present. A good depth that supports the life cycle of the aquatic food that is present. A bottom structure that supports life, like weeds, leaves or rocks. Now that we've covered lake structure, let's look at elements in the lake. Elements would be any area where aquatic food would reside or feed or both. Weed beds, muddy bottoms, leaves on the bottom and rocks are examples of elements. Where the element is located helps us determine a possible aquatic food that would live or feed there. 60% of all aquatic food lives in, feeds in, or hunts in weed beds. Trout can actually smell the difference between weed bed types, which suggests that they also know what lives there. The depth of the element, the size, and even the shape of the element can tell us what aquatic food may live or feed there. Deep water itself is an element of a lake, since it's used by both the trout and the aquatic food as a place of refuge. A fish finder is a great tool to check bottom elements, 
like the depth and size of weed beds and the location of mud or rocks. Visible weed beds are a good sign that aquatic food may be present. When you find a weed bed, you will need to collect a sample of the weeds to determine what aquatic food lives there. Here is how that is done. Drop your weed collection line over the front of the strip, stripping apron. It consists of just a weight and a triple hook and some old fly line. Put out as much as you need to to reach the bottom. Once you've reached the bottom, then move with your fins approximately 10 to 20 feet. As you move, the line may raise up from the bottom. You won't feel resistance. So put out more lines so it will stay totally on the bottom as you're moving with your fins. Once you've gone about 20 feet, then pull the line up and bring your sample into the stripping apron. Once you bring the uh, hook up from the bottom, and you've got some good samples of greenery. You go through the types of weeds and what they eat the insects eat, looking for a match. And there we go. This particular weed is available for all insects. Fantastic. Mud and rocks close to the shoreline are good habitat for scuds, caddis, and leeches. Bare trees in the spring indicates decayed vegetation in the lake, like leaves, and this is a good place to find some varieties of caddisflies or leeches. The location of the elements in a lake will help you to be more successful when you fish the lake. So let's see how that works. Here's a lake setup based on a fish finder used to identify the different elements in the lake. Here we have weed beds in three places. We have leaves also in three places. Here we have rocks and here we have some logs. Now the position of the weed beds is significant to determine what type of insect would be there. For example, this weed bed is about 15 feet deep. That's ideal for damselflies. If it's deeper than that, they don't necessarily like it. They like it uh, just a bit shallower like this. Also, this is close to a shoreline. They like that because they can migrate in when, they're get, when they get ready to become adults. Now, this wee bed is very, very long. It starts about 10 feet, then it's 15 feet here and 25 feet there. The interesting thing about this is mayflies love long weed beds. They prefer it, actually. Now, uh, since it's deeper than uh, uh, 15 feet from here to here, damselflies may not be found there, but they would be found in this section. Also, scuds usually live close to or under rocks that are uh, on the shoreline. In fact, if you go to a lake and you lift over a rock, on a sunny day, you'll probably find quite a few scuds underneath it because scuds do not like sunlight. They much prefer uh, overcast days or uh, uh, time when there's shadows. So uh, the mayflies like this distance, the scuds like this here. They'll, scuds will actually migrate and uh, feed here in, in the weed beds. Now the sun, as the sun moves in a certain direction, it actually creates a shadow in this weed bed, which is ideal for scuds. They prefer to, to actually feed on the side of weed bed, and actually where there's a shadow, then that's darker, and they love things that are dark. And uh, damselflies are aware of this, so damselflies will also move along the edge of the weed bed to feed on the scuds and other insects. When logs are close by like this, this would be an ideal place for leeches. Leeches feed off the decayed matter here, but they also, during a hatch, they'll move in here and feed on the insects that are actually hatching in this area. Now, where leaves are present, there's usually caddisflies. Here in Oregon, we have 13 varieties of caddisflies, but only two will actually eat leaves alone. 
nothing else but leaves. So there's a great possibility where leaves are located that these two varieties of caddisflies could be present. In this weed bed, we could also have scuds present. Although there's no rocks along, along the shoreline, there are leaves. And scuds actually eat decayed matter like leaves, so they could be present when it's close to a weed bed like this. Now what we have here is an, what I call an ideal situation. This weed bed is 20 feet deep. That's perfect for, uh, for uh, uh, scuds and also for caddis. Now we have leaves and we have rocks. Scuds like the rocks, scuds like the leaves. Leeches also live in leaves. So the caddis flies in this area, there are actually 13 varieties in Oregon of caddis flies that will either eat algae or insects or leaves or all three. And during that time, when they go through their life cycle from uh, larva to adult, some of them take two months and a majority of them take up to six months, which means fishing this area is a, a caddis flies in this area would be available to you from two to six months based on the cycle that they're in. You'd have larva, you'd have pupa, and you'd have adults all working in this area during, during that two to six month period. So this would be an ideal place to start fishing when you come to the lake once you identify that this is present. Now deep water is important for one thing, leeches. In the summer, leeches uh, go into deep water to mate. Now the trout know this and they actually look for a leech migration into the deep water. So. Uh, uh, that's an ideal time to use leeches specifically in deep water. Most of the times you use them along the shoreline where the debris is and where rocks are and everything else. By the way, caddis um, uh, eat algae and rocks in lakes actually produce algae. So that's another reason why rocks close to this weed bed are important because caddis can also be here as well as here. If, if they eat algae, they'd be here. If they eat leaves, they'd be here. If they, and when they eat insects, they'd be here. Now the next lesson, we're going to go into more detail of the feeding habits of, of insects based on a map similar to this. And we'll talk about the size of the insect. We'll talk about the shape of the insect. We'll also talk about the color of the insect. And I, originally I had planned for the aquatic food uh, habitat lesson to be just a single lesson. But I'm understanding now that the seasons are specifically important. So what I plan to do is provide aquatic food lessons based on seasons. So I'll start out with spring and do a, a scenario in string and spring and then through the other months. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too.